five cat pat tips and this is particularly for your phase three report hopefully you are coming to the end of your pat and you are just doing the final touches of your phase three report so i'm going to give you five tips of what you can do to try get as many marks as possible i'm going to focus a lot on things that i've picked up that students often leave out or don't do and they lose out on getting those marks so let's talk about my five cat pat tips for you the first cat pat tip is to check the rubric make sure that you are taking your rubric before you submit and go through it mark it yourself because you will find little parts of the rubric that you might not have realized that you've left out for example over here with your cover page maybe you didn't realize that you actually need an abstract on your cover page maybe you don't have it there if you leave it out you're going to lose that mark so make sure that you go in through the rubric and seeing which things you are leaving out I often get frustrated when students leave out automatic page numbering. It's the easiest mark to get. You'll probably have appendices so you've got different sections and make sure that you've got headers and footers and make sure that they are distinguished between the different sections. So your headers and your footers and your page numbering is set in the main document and you have a different style of headers and footers and page numbering for the appendices. Remember you are showing off your skills so you want to show off that you can set the headers and the footers for different sections. And then the one that's very easy to do is before you submit, check for spelling and for grammar. If a teacher marks your work and they do a spell check and they find a spelling mistake, you lose that mark. It's a very easy mark to get. Just run it before you submit. Now, cat pat tip number two. A lot of people, when they're talking about their findings, they talk about all the stuff they did in their phase two, the analysis. They talk about the spreadsheet, they talk about the database, but you need to talk about both the analysis and the research. Don't forget that in phase one, you did a lot of research, so you need to connect your findings to both the analysis and the research. If you look over here, you can see it's talking about phases one and two when it talks about the body of your report. You want appropriate information from phase one and phase two. So you're talking about the stuff that you found out in your analysis, in your survey, in your calculations, in your spreadsheet and your database queries. But you also did some research to find out what other people have found out. And you can talk about that as well. So you need to make sure you reference both. And make sure when you are doing this that you are grouping specific content together themes topics that are similar make sure that you group them together in paragraphs make sure that it makes a nice flow that's easy to read and then include graphics that are relevant and appropriate it doesn't always have to be a chart it could be something that is related to the topic but as long as it's relevant and appropriate and over here by the findings they talk about the process charts graphs queries reports that's from your phase two but they're also talking about the various sources that you got information that was manipulated that's from your phase one so make sure all your claims are supported by the relevant appropriate information so that's when you are referencing or links to the data from your phase one sources and i always recommend that you add something new add your own opinion to it look at the information and give what you think about it and maybe propose what you think the results mean and do it from the perspective of this is what i think and therefore i think more research must go into this topic don't make bold claims because your project is using a very small scale to be considered academic research but it's enough to get insight into what could possibly be so i encourage you to talk about what you think is a potential problem or solution to something but mention that more research would need to go into this topic don't be afraid to make those recommendations and insights. Then cat pet tip number three, make sure that you connect the topic. You have a focus question. That focus question needs to connect to your findings and your findings needs to then connect to your conclusion. For example, if your focus question is about the positive and negative impact of sustainable transport on our local communities in South Africa, then your findings need to relate to that focus question. It needs to focus on sustainable transport. It needs to focus on South African communities. It's got to focus on what they feel about those things. So make sure that the information that you are finding out in your analysis, which ties in a lot to your questionnaire, as well as your research, is related to the focus question. Now, you might have a lot of information about a lot of things, but focus on just the things that relate to your focus question. And then your conclusion needs to almost be a summary of those findings. Talk about, based on the questionnaire and research, this is what I found out. It's basically a summary that answers your focus question. I must be able to read your focus question and then read your conclusion and understand exactly how you answered your focus question. Because your conclusion is basically answering that focus question. So make sure that it all ties together. And then cat pat tip number four, your captions and references are very important. There are a lot of marks here, so make sure that you don't lose them. For example, when we talk about plagiarism, you need to make sure that all your sources are clearly acknowledged. 
which means you need to reference all of them. So just a reminder about what that means. You need to go to your references. You need to go to manage sources and then you need to include the details of your sources. For example, your website, there's show all biographical fields. Click on that so that you get all the fields because people often get confused between the year, month and day that is actually referring to the year, month and day that the article or website was uploaded. You might not have that, but you will have the year, month, and day that you accessed it. That's very important. The very least for a website is you need to have the web page name or site. You need to have the URL and the date that you accessed it. So make sure that you're including all that information in your sources. And then when you go to your text, you find the part of the text that refers to that source. And then you go to references, insert citation, and you click on the relevant source. So at the end of your sentence, you click on it, and then that'll add the citation to your document. And remember, you need to have at least three citations added because you've got three different sources of information. Make sure that they're all added and at least have three citations from different sources. So that's very important, but people often lose this mark about the graphics. They don't actually remember to acknowledge the graphics. Not all your graphics are going to be charts. Some of them are going to be images that you got online. So how do we reference them? This is what I would suggest. So if we've got a document, let's say we want to reference that picture. I would then go into references, insert caption. And then when you insert the caption, you can specify if it's a figure. If you are referring to a chart, you can make it a chart. If there's a table, you can use a table. But you put in the title of the picture. Then if you want to put the reference for the image in the caption, then you can maybe include the creator or photographer and then include the URL where you got the image and then the date that you accessed it. Very similar to actual physical source, but this way you're just referencing where you got that image from. If you forgot where you found that image, you can search on an image in Google. There's a video to show you how to do that. So you can find out where that image came from. Maybe you are using some nice graphics that are appropriate to your project, and maybe you generated them using AR. And that means you should also reference it, include the title, but you add in generated by the AR name, and then you put in the prompt that you use to get that image. Now, this is very important. You only do this if you've spoken to your teacher in advance about how you can use AR, if they allow it or not. If they've said no, then you don't do this at all. If you say to them, I just want to use it to generate some images and they're okay with it, you still need to reference it. But first check with your teachers. Don't assume that they're allowing you to use AR. Confirm with your teacher first. If this seems like it's too long and it's messing up the look and feel of your document because the images have these long batches of text underneath it, then the alternative is that you just put a plain caption in and that caption will be added to the bottom of your image. And then what you do is you click on that caption because you can edit it. And at the end of the title, you can then go and insert a citation like you did with the sources of your research. And then you can add that citation to the end of the caption. Then that way you've referenced it. You might not have your images in your source. So then you need to add them. So you need to go and manage sources. And I would add them as electronic source. And then add the details there of where you got that image. And that way you can ensure that you are referencing your images. And then don't forget at the end, you need to include your bibliography. You can insert bibliography and also include a table of figures or table of diagrams. You go to your references, you go insert table of figures, and there you can specify based on the caption that you created. You might have added figures, you might have added tables, you might have added your own label. So for example, charts, make sure that you've got a table for each one so they can see which page each chart, each table, each figure is on. And then my final cat pat tip number five is to link to your phase two data. How many times do I have students that forget to add links to their spreadsheet and database? So if you look here, they talk about hyperlinks within the report. That means you must be able to jump around the report using bookmarks and hyperlinks. Your table of contents allows you to do that, but you need to add other ones as well. You need to show off that you can do that. And then also to include links to your spreadsheet and your database. I often see matrix leaving this out and then they lose that one mark, which literally will take you two minutes to get. Let's say we've got our text. We are talking about how we are conducting our analysis. You might have this in your task definition. You might have this in your findings. You need to mention what you did to get your information. Don't just say, this is what I found out. How did you find that out first? And then say what you found out. So yeah, we say we conducted a questionnaire. Well, that's great because our questionnaire should be in one of the appendices down below. So you want to be able to jump from there to the questionnaire if they want. So therefore, we're going to go to insert and a hyperlink. 
and then when we get to the option we can go to a place in this document if you made the appendix for this questionnaire a particular type of heading it will be listed there under headings otherwise you can make a bookmark to it but that's an easy way to do a jump from there to your questionnaire and then over here we've got mention of our spreadsheet we can link that to our actual spreadsheet by going to insert another hyperlink but this time we're going to an existing file or web page and instead of writing the address of the web page we're going to go here to our documents go to the relevant phase 2 folder click on the spreadsheet and then it will link it to that spreadsheet and then you do the exact same thing for the database and in that way you're going to make sure that you get that mark for links to the external data very easy to get that mark so to recap my five cat pat tips for you are check the rubric mark your pat before you submit it make sure that you're getting all those little marks that you might have left out make sure that you're referring to the analysis and the research don't just refer to the data from phase two also use the information that you found in phase one in your findings make sure you connect the topic your focus question must relate to your findings which must relate to your conclusion Make sure that you put captions on all your images. Make sure that you reference all your information that you got from research and make sure that you add those table of figures and bibliography at the end. And don't forget to put a link to your phase two data. So those are my five tips. Hopefully you're going to get as many marks as possible for your phase three. We have another video coming out soon, which will give you my five cat pat tips for your website for phase three. So good luck, grade 12s. If you don't want to miss out on other tips, make sure that you click on that subscribe button and share us with your friends. Be a good person and share the love. And remember, we're also on TikTok at Mr. Long Education. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long way.